Hello students, welcome to our next video that is on the steering and suspension systems. We are discussing about the steering system and the suspension system of the two and three wheeler vehicles. Now in the case of the steering system, we almost saw about the geometry of the steering. Also we saw about the handlebar arrangement that is required for the steering of the vehicle. And also we saw about the steering column which is required for the vehicle two wheelers. Now in the case of the steering column, we saw that the suspension system is also interconnected with the steering system. So whenever we design the suspension system, we have to keep in mind about the criteria for the suspension system as well. So let's start with the detail of the suspension system. In the case of the suspension system, there are requirements that needs to be fulfilled in case of the two wheeler driving. Now in the case of the two wheeler driving, the vehicle has to sustain or has to conquer the loads that is being applied on the vehicle in the different conditions, right? There are mainly two requirements. One is the kinematic requirements and the other one is the dynamic requirements, right? The word suggests the kinematic requirement mostly gives us the static loads which applies on the vehicle. And the second one, the dynamic requirements gives us the dynamic loads that are applied on the vehicle when vehicle is being driven. Mostly the static loads will be applied when our vehicle is going in the straight direction on the straight road or in the normal road, right? The road should not be rough. If the road is rough or if the vehicle is going over the bump, then the dynamic loads will be apply, applied on the vehicle. So in the case of the tire that you can see the two cases has been shown in below figure in which you can see that the transverse motion on the wheel will be applied when the vehicle is being driven, which means the vehicle will feel the vibrations through the tires and through the tires that vibration will be transformed to the wheels. That type of vibration should be absorbed by the vehicle. Also the tendency of the tires is to tilt itself. When we generally turn the vehicle or when we go straight to the vehicle then the tire angle mean, uh, ch changes itself. But because of the rigidity of the suspension system and the steering system it will not allow the tire to change its angle that is known as the camber angle. So that camber angle should not be changed when vehicle is going in the straight direction. But when the vehicle is going in an inclined direction, then the camber angle will change, right? As we have discussed earlier, that the camber angle will change when the vehicle takes turn. That angle we know as the slip angle, right? And that slip angle gives us the cornering force which assists the vehicle to get back to its original position after vehicle has completed its turn. So this is one case that is required to fulfill with the help of the suspension system. The second one is the transverse motion of the vehicle to parallel to its axis, right? When we see the vehicle from the front side, then the tire should not move in the right or left direction too much, which means the vibration in the tire should not be there which means the tire should be properly straight and the, when the vehicle is going in the straight path, the tire should be in the vertical motion or should be in the same position as it was before the vehicle was driving, right? So these are the criteria that needs to be fulfilled by the kinematic requirements. There are some degrees of freedom that applies on the suspension system when vehicle is driven. Generally, there are six to eight degrees of freedom that needs to be followed during the two wheeler driving. Also, there are three motions, pitching motion, rolling motion and ewing motion that we have already studied in the design part. So that motions needs to be compensated by the help of the suspension system. Mainly suspension system does to the driver is it provides the comfort to the driver, right? It provides the right comfort to the driver so that the driver does not feel fatigue after the long driving of the two wheelers, right? In case of the two wheelers, the suspension is more important as in case of the four wheelers, the maximum amount of the load will not be transferred towards the driver. But in case of the two wheelers, there are maximum chances that loads 
will be transferred to the driver and that load should be in the minimum amount so that the driver does not feel for too much fatigue that he totally tires itself. The second type of load that is dynamic loads. Now the dynamic loads will apply on the vehicle when the vehicle is going over the bump or it goes over a rough road or during the acceleration and braking. Whenever we start the vehicle, there will be some accelerations load on the vehicle. Also, whenever we suddenly apply the braking force on the two-wheeler, the braking loads will also apply on the vehicle. This type of load generates a movement on the tire or on the vehicle. That movement should be absorbed by the suspension system. Generally, two characteristics which we know as the spot and dip. The squat means when we suddenly accelerate a vehicle, the front part of the vehicle just lifts a little bit during the driving. Right? If you can remember, if you suddenly accelerate a vehicle, the front part of the vehicle will lift itself. Same when we apply sudden brake to the vehicle, the front part of the vehicle will go in the downward direction or we can say it will dip in the downward direction just a little bit. These two things is known as the squatting and the dip of the vehicle. So this should be compensated by the help of the suspension system. This squat should not be too much and the suspension should apply a downward force whenever a vehicle tries to uh, lift itself from the front side. The suspension will provide a downward force and the vehicle will go down because of this downward force. So these dynamic requirements needs to be followed by the help of the suspension system as well. There are some design considerations that needs to be followed whenever we are designing our suspension system. The various suspension design considerations should be kept in mind so that the driver should not feel too much of the fatigue. That should be the main focus on the designing of the suspension system for the two wheelers. The first case is the suspension frequency, right? The frequency, whenever we go over a bump or any load, the spring that is attached with the suspension will vibrate. That vibration frequency should not be too much that the vehicle keeps going up, down, up, down for the long time, right? The value of the frequency should be between 1 to 1.5 hertz. That is the maximum value. Above that value, the driver will not feel comfortable and it will go up down and the vibration will be too much. So also there are two cases that has been shown. In the first case, you can see the posture of the driver is vertical. So whenever there is vibrations on the vehicle, the driver will feel the vibrations in a one line, in one direction only. But in the second case, the driver is inclined towards the front side of the vehicle. That is the posture of the newer bikes or you can say the sports type of bikes. In that case, whenever there is a vibration from the below side, from the downward side, the vibration will be felt by the whole spine of the driver. Right? You can see the spine will feel vibration throughout its horizontal motion. It will not be in only one direction but it will be throughout the spine of the driver. So, in that case, the vibration will be much more affecting the driver. So, to avoid these vibrations, we provide one facility that is known as the damper. The damper is used to absorb the vibrations in the vehicle. That vibration will be absorbed in very minimum time so that the vehicle can be driven very easily. Second thing is the sprung and unsprung mass ratio. So what is sprung mass? The mass of the components which has been attached above the suspension system. Which means the components weight which is going on the suspension system that is known as the sprung mass. The mass of the components which are below the suspension system is known as the unsprung mass that should be balanced. If the unsprung mass is too much, then whenever there is a load from the downward side, the number of load that is being generated towards the driver will be 
more. If the more mass is below the suspension system, then the suspension will face much more weight or much more load during the rough condition of the road. So, the ratio of the unsprung and sprung mass should be well balanced. Next thing is the cornering requirements. Now, during the cornering, the vehicle will take turn, also it will lean towards the turning side. For example, if we are turning towards the left side, then also the vehicle will lean towards the left side slightly. Because of that leaning, the vehicle will face an extra load or extra force that we know as the cornering force. During the vehicle straight driving, vehicle only faces the load in the downward direction because of the weight of the vehicle. But during the turning, the force will be more on the vehicle. So during the cornering, the suspension should also sustain the load that is being applied on the two-wheeler as well. Next is the wheelbase. Now the value of the wheelbase also affects the suspension system as well. You can see in the figure, if the wheelbase is equal or we can say little bit smaller. So in that case, what will happen is that if there are two bumps at the equal spacing and the vehicle is going over the bump. In that case, what will happen is that both the tires will go simultaneously over the bumps. But once the bump has been gone and one, if the bump is only one in the road, so in that case, what will happen? is that when the vehicle is front tire is going over the bump then there will be load on the above side from the front tire and in the rear tire the load will be on the downward direction once the front wheel has passed the bump the rear tire will go above side and the front tire will go downward side if the wheelbase is lower then what will happen is that when the front tire is going downward direction at the same time rear tire is going in the upward direction that will create an unbalanced system or unbalanced forces in case of the two wheelers so to avoid that the wheelbase value should be comparatively larger and so that the suspension is properly adjusted and unbalanced force is not created next thing is the spring rate and the total wheel travel the spring rate which means the spring vibration frequency how much softer the spring is right the spring should be as soft as possible so that ride should comfort should be provided but if spring is too much softer then the vibration that is generated in spring will be too much so it will create a up down up down one for a longer time if the vehicle passes from the bump so there is a limit to the softness of the spring also the wheel travel wheel travel in the vertical direction right the wheel should not be traveling too much towards the upward side otherwise there is too much load on the spring during the travel of the wheel second thing is the ride height and the preload ride height which means whenever we drive the vehicle the rider should be at the proper height and the height should be provided so that the load is not transferred toward the driver. Second is the preload condition. In the case of the preload condition, when the vehicle is not being driven, at that condition the load should be proper on the vehicle and that loading condition should not change too much whenever we are driving the vehicle. And the last is the braking and acceleration. As I have told earlier during the requirements, the braking and acceleration will generate a force on the two wheelers. Whenever we are suddenly braking the vehicle, the force will be generated. Also during the acceleration, the force will be generated. Both the forces will be in the opposite directions. These forces should be absorbed by the suspension system and squatting and dipping should not happen in the two wheelers. Right, so these are the considerations that needs to be kept in mind whenever we are designing the suspension system. From the next video, we will see about the suspension system that we use nowadays. Until then, thank you so much.